So now it's time to take a look at the data mapper module itself. In this animation, uh, we'll simply be presenting all the interface uh, parts, the panes, and how they work together. Um, we'll actually be working inside of the application in the following animation. So the data mapper module supports a wide variety of data source file types. For the moment, uh, the following file types are supported. So we have text or line printer, we have CSV, XML, PDF, PDFVT, and Microsoft Access. It's also possible to uh, import data through an ODBC connection or to connect directly to a couple of different database servers such as MySQL, JDBC, Oracle, and SQL Server. The Data Mapper Modules interface is actually pretty simple to use. Um, it's made up of different panes and we're going to look at them in the order that we are generally going to use them when creating a data mapping configuration. First of all, at the top is the data viewer, which displays the content of your data sample after it has been interpreted by the preprocessor as well as the delimiter and boundary settings. Um, this pane is used both to verify that the data is processed correctly as well as to create data selections that we're going to use throughout the process, which we're going to see in the following animation. Under the settings tab, we find the delimiter boundary settings as well as a list of data samples um, that are used to test the current data mapping configuration. So as we already know, uh, delimiters are the borders that naturally separate blocks of data in the data sample, and they're different for each data type. Uh, for example, here in the CSV, uh, the uh, CSV is delimited by record, and the PDF files are delimited naturally by pages. Then we have the boundaries, which are the separation between each source record, and they must be defined manually for each data mapping configuration because data sources are generally unique between each form of data. Now, boundaries can be set, for instance, uh, through the detection of a word or through a conditional expression. And the last part of the settings tab is the data sample section, which displays a list of all the imported data samples um, that are available now in the data mapping configuration. Of course, as many data samples as necessary can be imported to properly test the configuration. Under the Steps tab is the process that prepares and extracts data. Um, the process contains multiple distinct steps and it's run for each of the source records in our data sample. The Step Properties pane is then used to adjust the properties of each step in the process. The pane is divided in a few sections depending on the step and the data type. It always contains a section to name and document the selected steps, however. Finally, the data model pane displays the result of all the preparation and extraction done by the process. The pane displays the content of a single record within the record set. The order in which these panes were presented corresponds to the order in which they're normally used to create a data mapping configuration. These panes and their functionalities will be seen in more details in the next animations.